Good morning. Welcome to Ore Valley United Church of Christ. I am Reverend Drew Terry. I am the pastor here. And here at Ore Valley United Church of Christ, we say whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, you are a beloved child of God. And we are deeply grateful to have you join us this morning. Especially if you are newer to experiencing our virtual service in our community, I'd invite you to reach out to us and find out more information about us. You can find us on our website, orvalleyucc.org, or you can find us on Facebook at Or Valley United Church of Christ. And all those places will give you a lot more information about who we are and our life in Christ. We also invite you, especially in this time of social distancing, <clears throat> we'd love to get to know who's out there, who's participating in our community. So if you have any questions or if you'd simply like to say hi and just share a little bit more about who you are, we'd love to know you. So send us an email or you can send us a Facebook message and we will be happy to connect with you, answer any questions you have about our community, tell you more about who we are, and also get to know you a little bit better. A few notes about our life as a community in Christ. Last week, I want to thank everyone, everyone, everyone. We had a wonderful, successful food drive, and we collected a ton of underwear and socks. There's at least two big boxes of socks and underwear for homeless veterans for the veterans stand down coming up. And so I want to thank everyone who was able to participate. We raised enough food for about three weeks for a family of four to have food to just live and to thrive and to celebrate God's blessings. So thank you to everyone who participated. We will have another food drive July 11th. Normally we have these food drives the first Sunday of the month, the first Sunday of July at July 4th. So we're going to have our drive-by for July on July 11th from 11.30 to 12.30. There will be more information coming about those. But on that food drive, not only will we be collecting uh, non-perishable foods, we're focusing especially on peanut butter. Interfaith Community Services has asked us to collect as much peanut butter as we want. And Interfaith Community Services prefers the smaller jars of peanut butter. I know we like to, I go to Costco too, and I get the big jars of peanut butter. ICS is able to do more with the smaller individual jars. So if you're able to, please do go to... Uh, one of the grocery stores near you and just get one of those regular sized peanut butters and get as many as you can and we will get those to ICS for their uh, peanut butter drive. We are also collecting school supplies. We're in communication with various organizations who do school supply drives and get school supplies into the hands of kids who need it the most so that way they have everything they need so they can succeed in the future. So school supplies and peanut butter and we'll be collecting those on July 11th and more information to come. <clears throat> I'd like to make an announcement. We are, uh, we are growing and we're having a good time doing it. We're living more and more into God's future and to God's call and one of the ways we're discerning how to do that is uh, you can't see Kyle, and you probably may have never seen Kyle, but Kyle is the IT person who's the reason that we have such a vibrant and wonderful experience on Sunday mornings, especially over the past year when we haven't been able to gather in person. Well, we're going to call a congregational meeting on June 27th, so two weeks from today, on June 27th at 1130 via Zoom, so we'll send out the Zoom link to you over the coming weeks. But we invite everyone, everyone, everyone to come join this meeting. We're going to have a conversation about adopting. Kyle has been volunteering his time and energy into, into this and many other things. And we're going to have a conversation about creating a IT staff position for our church so that way we really have what we need to move forward into doing God's ministry and to celebrate all the work that goes into this. So please do, if you are able, join us on June 27th at 1130 after worship to discuss moving forward in that direction and adopting an IT staff position. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to our office or to me. 
Dear loved ones, this past week I had some sad news to share, and that sad news was the passing of one of our dearly beloved members, Bob Lyons. He died after a few months of being on hospice care. Bob gave a lot of life to this church. Bob um, was very active in our food ministry even before the pandemic. And so today I'm dedicating today's service to Bob's life and to Bob's memory as we celebrate his, <clears throat> all of the love that he brought into our community. So as we remember Bob and all the generosity he brought into this world, let us take a deep breath. Let us center ourselves on who we are made in God's image, beloved children of God, whoever we are wherever we are, and let us join together in the power of the Holy Spirit, singing the call to worship. Please join me in our call and response called to worship. Come, walk in the light of faith. We will walk, walk humbly, humbly with, with our God. God. Come, love in the light of faith. We will, we will love, love everything, everything the light, light touches. touches. Come, sing in the light of faith. We, we will, will sing, sing praise, praise to our God. Come, live in the light of faith. We will, we will live, live as, as faithful, faithful followers, followers of Christ. Christ. Please join me in a prayer, spirit of prayer. Help us to walk by faith, O God, not by sight. Be our vision, Holy One, for without vision your people perish. Remind us that you do not see as mortals see, for you do not judge by outward appearances, but look on the heart. With our eyes of faith enlightened, Help us see your kingdom in a tiny mustard seed and marvel at the growth you offer to all through the power of your spirit. Amen.
Dear loved ones, please join me in our prayer of confession <clears throat> appearing on your screen. When death comes, we earn for your grace and the healing you offer in the midst of our grief. When tragedy strikes, we long for your mercy and the blessed assurance you offer in the midst of our suffering. When trouble threatens, we look for your shelter and the confidence you offer in the midst of our confusion and doubt. Renew our trust in your Son's resurrection and revive our hope in new beginnings. As Samuel before us, help us focus on life, listen to your voice, and follow where you lead. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Dear loved ones, hear these words of God's mercy and everlasting assurance of pardon. As we allow God to shape the desires of our hearts, we live in a new creation and agents to bring forth. The responsive psalm today is Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob protect you. May God send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May God remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout with joy over your victory and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven and mighty victories be his right hand. Take some pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord, our God. They will collapse and fail, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the all-powerful, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Buenos días. La lectura de hoy, 13 de junio, Salmos 20. Que el Señor te responda cuando estés angustiado. Que el nombre de Dios de Jacob te proteja que te envíe ayuda desde el santuario, que desde Sion te dé su apoyo. Que se acuerde de todas tus ofrendas, que acepte tus holocaustos. Que te conceda lo que tu corazón desea, que haga que se cumplan todos tus planes. Nosotros celebramos tu victoria y en el nombre de nuestro Dios, Desplegaremos las banderas. Que el Señor cumpla con todas tus peticiones. Ahora que el Señor salvará a su unigido, Él responderá desde su santo cielo y con su poder de, le dará grandes victorias. Estos confían en sus carros de guerra. Aquellos confían en sus corceles pero nosotros confiamos en el nombre de nuestro Señor Dios. Ellos son vencidos y caen, pero nosotros nos ergimos y de pie permanecemos. Conoce, Señor, la victoria al Rey. Respondemos cuando te llamemos.
Dear loved ones, we now enter into our time of prayer together. And in this time, we take a moment to lift up the prayers of our community as well as of our world. <clears throat> we have a couple of prayer requests uh, from our beloved Grace Caldwell and for friends of hers. Uh, first, we pray for David Curtis, who is having open heart surgery. We pray that all the doctors and nurses are filled with wisdom and compassion and that David has the strength he needs in this time. <clears throat> we lift up prayers for the Fasoon family as they confront multiple complicated health issues. Again, we lift up prayers for all their doctors and nurses be filled with compassion and wisdom and that they ha the Fasoon family has the strength they need to face these challenges. <clears throat> We lift up prayers for Marvin Watson, the brother of uh, the brother-in-law of Carolyn Watson, and uh, one of the folks who's joined us virtually from uh, distance by geography, but still in our hearts, close and near. Marvin, we lift you up in prayer as you are recovering from knee surgery. We pray that God's healing spirit be upon you, and that you have the strength, the comfort you need at this time for your healing. <clears throat> and we also pray for compassion for all those who support you in this journey. We lift up prayers for Graceberg's family who lives in Wyoming and they're uh, near wildfires that have broken out. We pray that they are safe. We pray for all the firefighters who are working to keep them safe, that they are filled with courage and that they are also themselves safe. And so prayers for Graceburg's family. Lift up prayers for our entire Western region and everybody who will face the wildfire season as there are already two wildfires that are broken out in Arizona, creating evacuations. Prayers for all of those who live in a wildfire area. Prayers that they are safe. Prayers for the, all the firefighters who are working to keep us safe and keep our communities and our creation, God's creation, <clears throat> in good condition. <clears throat> we also are lifting up Billy Graceberg's son-in-law, who is being treated for kidney stones. We pray for his healing and prayers for all of those who work with him. <clears throat> I want to lift up a prayer, <clears throat> especially as we lift, just lifted up prayers for wildfires. Prayers for us as we are hoping for. We are only a couple of days from the official beginning of monsoon season. And the past couple of years have been what they've called non-soon seasons. So we pray this year for God's gracious abundance to truly pour out upon us in rain in a safe way, still the refreshing rain that we need, that our surrounding beautiful creation needs, so that way it has life, so that way we have life, and we are filled, and all of God's creation is filled with God's abundance. So let us pray for rain, and pray that it comes soon, and pray that it comes often during monsoon season. <coughs> and finally, as I open today's service, I, we dedicate today's service to Bob Lyons and his life and all of the love he brought from God into this world, especially into this community. Him and Martha, his wife, joined our church over 20 years ago. And so there's a lot of life and love there. So prayers for Bob that he is at eternal rest and in peace and the loving arms of God. Prayers for the Lions family as they grieve during this time. May they be comforted and prayers that they find ways to celebrate Bob's life. And the same prayers for us in our community and for all those who knew Bob. May we be comforted by the Holy Spirit and by one another in this time of grief and loss, as well as be filled with the love that Bob left behind from God to celebrate his life and all that he did. <clears throat> Lifting up these prayers as well as the prayers we hold in the sacredness of our hearts, let us go to God in a moment of silence. <clears throat> Dear
Dear God, the one who is healing, peace, and love. We come to you this morning <clears throat> seeking to know you once again, to know your intimate, life-giving, abundant presence. We come to you filled with the joy that this is the day you have made. We also come knowing the struggles, the fears, the pains, the sufferings, the burdens of our lives, as well as all of your creation, of our neighbors near and far. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will break into this broken world, into all the broken lives, including our own, as well as our dear loved ones, of all of our siblings, to bring forth your revelation, your shelter, your care, and to fill us with what we need so we may move forward in your light. We especially this day, God, lift up to you our dearly beloved sibling, Bob, who brought so much life and love into this community. We are deeply grateful. We are grateful that for Bob, all pain and suffering has come to an end and that he has returned to his eternal home in your presence. God, we pray for Martha and for his family and for our church and for everyone who knew Bob. Give us comfort in our time of grief. We also pray, God, that you will empower us and fill us so we may celebrate life and celebrate all of Bob's gifts, the gifts of your revelation until that glorious day when we all meet again. Lifting up these prayers as well as the prayers in our hearts, let us come together in your name, God, to sing the words Christ taught us. ones, we now enter into our time of offering together, and in this time we take a moment to lift up all of the gifts we were able to give, whether it's food or clothing for the homeless and those in need, <coughs> whether it's time and talent to make this service possible, to bring forth the good news of Christ's love into this world, or whether it's your donation to support us being good stewards of the creation that God has given us, of this space that God has blessed us with, to be good stewards of that. Most importantly, so that way we can use this, this space that is a worship center for all God's children, for everyone, 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 to use this as the base to go out into the world and to bring, bring Christ's love into the world and to serve those most in need. Whatever you're able to give today, let us take a moment to celebrate in prayerful reflection. If you are able to give a donation to our church, you can do that by mailing in a donation to 1401 East El Conquistador Way, Oro Valley, Arizona, 85704. Or 
you can go to our website, orvalleyucc.org, and we have a My Offering button and a few clicks away, and you'll be able to donate. Whatever gifts you offer this morning, we have been taking time during the offering <clears throat> as Jose plays his offertory music. I invite you to take a moment and reach out to somebody. Even if it's the per if you if you happen to be blessed to be sitting next to somebody, reach out and say, Peace of Christ be with you. If you're not, you can text somebody, maybe pause our service, call somebody for a moment, maybe you send a quick email. Just tell somebody you're thinking about them. Remind people out there that we do not travel this road alone. So let's put our hands on our hearts. Let us lift up all the love we've given, whether it's the love <clears throat> with somebody over a lifetime or the love of a fleeting moment with a stranger. Let us go together to God, lifting up all of the gifts we have to offer. When we see with the eyes of God we perceive that each person is a new creation, planted by God and rooted in Christ. As we share our offerings as signs of peace and love within our church and our community, we are also taking time to rejoice in the new life and blessings all around us.
The Offertory Prayer Bountiful God, your kingdom is like the seed that is scattered on the ground. How it grows we know not, but there is abundance in the harvest. Your kingdom is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a shrub where the birds of the air build their nests. May the gifts we bring before you this day bear the fruit of your kingdom. May all be fed and may all be blessed. Amen. Scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. La escritura de hoy, Marcos, capítulo 4, versos 26 a 34. Jesús continuó, el reino de Dios se parece a quien esparce semilla en la tierra. Sin que éste sepa cómo, y ya sea que duerma o esté despierto, día y noche brota y crece la semilla. La tierra da fruto por sí sola, primero el tallo, luego la espiga, y después el grano lleno de la espiga. Tan pronto como el grano está maduro, se le mete la hoz, pues ha llegado el tiempo de la cosecha. También dijo, ¿con quién vamos a compartir el reino de Dios? ¿Qué parabola podemos usar para describirlo? Es como un grano de mostaza. Cuando se siembra en la tierra es la semilla más pequeña que hay. Pero una vez sembrada, crece esta convertirse en la grande de las hortalizas y echa ramas tan grandes que las aves pueden anidar bajo su sombra. Y con muchas parábolas semejantes les enseñaba Jesús la palabra hasta donde podían entender. 
no les decía nada sin emplear parábolas. Pero cuando estaba a solas con sus discípulos, les explicaba todo. La palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias a Dios. Dear loved ones, will you please pray with me? Dear God, the one who is love and truth, we come to you this day to be renewed in your word. I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. <coughs> so today's passage <coughs> is two parables. And even in the middle of the storytelling, Jesus is telling stories, trying to teach people lessons to help them better understand God's movement, what, what one translation calls God's reign. What does it look like for God to take over the world, truly bring forth God's revelation, full, the full revelation of God's purpose into the world? What will that look like? What does it mean to be a part of that? And uh, Jesus is trying to describe that. And even Jesus, halfway through the passage, admits that it's not an easy task. It's almost impossible to describe the divine revelation, this infinite, powerful, eternal reality, within the confines of limited, finite, earthly experience. Still, Jesus makes an attempt. And the first parable <clears throat> is about a sower. And it's, it's really emphasizing the, the utter mystery of God's revelation and, and how we are to live into that mystery, this, this bizarre unknown and uncertainty. And over the past 15 plus months, we've gotten really good at living into the unknown and uncertainty, or at least we've become really familiar with the unknown and uncertainty. Maybe we didn't live well into it. I don't know. But here's how Jesus invites us to think about how we need to live more fully into the unknown, into the uncertainty, especially of God's revelation and, and unfolding new creation. And Jesus tells this story of a sower who goes out and scatters seeds and then goes about his work, his life. He, he goes to bed at night, goes and gets some rest. Rest is an important part of the experience. And then gets up every day and just tends. And slowly the seed changes. First the blade, and then it gets a little bit bigger. And then sure enough, one day it's got a nice ripe wheat. <clears throat> all the while, Jesus points out, Jesus says, all the while the sower doesn't know how doesn't really know how. And thanks to modern science, we know a lot more of how a seed goes from being a seed to a full head of wheat and onto our table with some bread. Still, there's an utter underlying mystery to it all, to, to what we're called to do day in and day out, as well as what the ultimate end will be. There's a total disconnect there. It reminds me of a more contemporary story and a really bizarre interaction between a, a well-known and well-respected Christian church historian named Dr. David Piccini and his former teacher, one of America's greatest preachers of all time, Reverend Dr. Gardner Taylor. Reverend Dr. Gardner Taylor was a pastor at Concord Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York. And he also taught at Harvard University, which is where he first met young David Piccini. Reverend Dr. Taylor was known for giving these rebel-rousing sermons, these inspiring, powerful sermons. I've, I've heard people who actually got to see him preach, and they just say it was just an indescribable, it was a true mystery what happened, but what happened was a true experience of the Holy Spirit. And Reverend Dr. Taylor would give these rousing, inspiring, life-giving sermons, and then he would lead his congregation 
out the church door and they go onto the streets of Brooklyn into a predominantly um, and into a predominantly impoverished and African-American community, and they would go out and they would speak out for justice. They would protest and they would move and they would, they would speak out about racial injustice. They would speak out about economic disparities. And that's how they did it. And one day, Dr. David Piccini, who had taken Reverend Dr. Taylor's classes and learned from him, had gone back just to see Reverend Taylor preach one more time and to have that experience. And he was able, Dr. Bruccini was able to have a moment with Reverend Taylor as, as one of these empowering, inspiring sermons and the entire congregation was going to go out into the streets to bring forth God's revelation to, in the parable, to reap the harvest of God's revelation. And as Dr. Bruccini encounters Dr. Taylor, Dr. Bruccini says, Reverend Taylor, how do you know it's God speaking to you? Reverend Taylor looked intently into his former student's eyes and said, I don't. I believe. That's what today's parable is about. This first parable, anyway. It's about the fact that we have to have both courage and humility to move day in and day out. Day in and day out, we just refresh our faith in what the task at hand is today and what God is calling us in each moment. And we tend to it. We care for it. Like a sower who cares for a budding seed. We care for the moment and the task at hand. And we trust and we have faith that what God is doing through it all is bringing forth abundant life. And one day when that abundant life is revealed, we will be ready to reap it. That moves us to our second parable. Again, in the midst of this, in the transition, Jesus says, what image can we say? Still, boldly, faithfully, courageously, Jesus offers an image. The second image is of the mustard seed that's been scattered by many people. Jesus points out this mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. And yet, through something, through some wondrous reality, that mustard seed blossoms into one of the largest bushes. One of my colleagues Reverend Michael Bush at our dearly beloved sibling church, Casa Sedovis, UCC. Reverend Michael Bush pointed out to me, mustard seeds are weeds. They grow everywhere. And that's what Jesus says. It takes over the soil. But Jesus says that this, this weed, this giant massive bush, becomes from a small seed the shelter, the life-giving care for all birds, for flocks and flocks of birds. It's the place where they find life and renewal. As I thought about this, the next story that came to my mind was actually my experience with Bob Lyons. I didn't really know Bob that well. And over the past couple of years, we had, we had a cup of coffee one time. But really, the most central thing I knew about Bob was that before pandemic, before we did drive-bys, Bob was the guy who took care of our food. We had a little bin. We have a little blue bin still there. Sits at the corner right next to the door. As soon as you walked in, you probably missed it if you were new to the church. But you'd walk in and there'd just be this blue bin sitting there. But for those who knew, they knew that that's where you would drop your food donations. Bring a grocery bag or maybe a can of food. And you'd drop your your food into the blue bin. Bob, really in many ways, from my perspective, silently, quietly, every Sunday after service, would go to the bin, take out whatever was in there, whatever handful of groceries were in there, enough to fill a little bin, and would load his minivan and drive it to ICS. 
That was our food drive every Sunday. And he did it faithfully. He did it diligently. I don't think Bob could have ever realized. I don't think any of us could have ever realized that that little act, that little act of every Sunday, going to this little bin, grabbing food, loading a minivan, and taking a 10-minute drive, would become the cornerstone of a community in deep need. That that act would blossom into a community yearning and crying out for some sort of connection, for some sort of faith-based, safe interaction during a pandemic. Because that's what happened. Because that little act, that little blue bin, an 80-year-old man going to it every Sunday afternoon, taking it and loading it to a minivan, became the way to gather. It became a, a joyous moment, and a, a joyous hour in the parking lot, collecting hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food. We are averaging over 300 pounds of food a month now. I don't know what we averaged before that. I not sure it was that much. But not only do we collect food during these times, too, we've also collected all kinds of things. We've collected notes of encouragement for homeless teenagers. We've collected, we've collected underwear and socks for homeless veterans. We've collected, all of a sudden I'm forgetting all the things we've collected. We've collected tons of stuff. Every first Sunday, we're going to collect a ton of peanut butter. We're going to collect school supplies in the future. We've collected donations for water for people in need far away. All because a year ago, two years ago, somebody would go to a corner of our building, pick up a couple of grocery bags, maybe three or four, and put them in a minivan. That seed blossomed into the shelter, into the care, into the life-giving empowerment of God to serve the world and to bring forth God's revelation no matter the circumstances. Even when we couldn't safely worship in person to continue being a faith community, to continue having a shelter, to continue having a place not only to be refreshed in God's word, but to actually respond to Christ's call with the Holy Spirit. Dear loved ones, we know all too well that life is an utter mystery, probably more so than we want to admit. Our call is to wake up, tend to what we need to, and then go to rest and do it again when God calls us. And to have faith that however insignificant we may feel, however unimportant or unexciting what we tend to might be, to have the faith that God's going to take it and bring forth the promised abundance of life-giving love for all creation. Amen.
Dear loved ones, please forgive me. I have one. Oh. I got the wave that my mic wasn't on. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, I apologize for that one important announcement. Since we are not in person worshiping right now, we are offering through the month of June at 8.30 on Sunday mornings right here behind me in our prayer garden. Uh, you don't have to wear a mask, but we do encourage you to social distance. We are having a prayer service, and we will have communion. It's about a 20-minute prayer service. We'll gather while it's cool and just be together so we can have even more space so that seed can continue to blossom to be together in faith, to pray together and to break bread together in a safe way. So please, if you're able to join us any of the remaining Sundays in June, uh, 8.30 in our prayer garden, we'll be here. <clears throat> Let us go forth to proclaim the good news that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. As seeds planted by God, we go to shepherd God's gifts of love and hope. Go forth to live the good news that we live in a time of new beginnings. As plantings of the Lord, we go to share God's gifts of mercy and grace.